Welcome to it. Hello, everybody. I am TJ Denzer, news editor with Shack News, here with Greg Burke, our video editor for Shack News. And we are here today with Stern Pinball's Jack Danger, ambassador for Stern Pinball, <laughs> pinball aficionado, pinball streamer. Uh, how's it going, Jack? It's good. Uh, just it's CES day, so I get to share my love of pinball with everybody else. Absolutely. And you guys picked up this shouldn't be thrown around lightly, but you kind of picked up the holy grail of musical licenses, like the much sought after, seldom given Led Zeppelin. That's yeah. right. Uh, and uh, y'all it, it, are getting well. ready to rock a absolutely new pinball machine for 2021 on the you Led Zeppelin it. license. Yeah, Led Zeppelin notoriously does not uh, hand out their IP to anybody. So Stern Pinball, who's been around, I'd say a little over 30 years, it's taken about that long to get this license. So um, here we are. <laughs> and this actually follows up on a, another pretty successful license that you all had last year. You uh, you announced the Iron Maiden pinball machine. Yeah. Which uh, itself was <laughs> a masterpiece. Like that thing looked gorgeous, had so many had so many awesome features to it. And uh, are we, are we uh, getting a look at the Led Zeppelin machine today? Absolutely. I can switch over right now if you'd like. For sure. Let's go. Look at that transition. Ooh wee. So here we are. This is actually the limited di uh, limited edition Led Zeppelin game. Uh, All Stern Pinball Machine Cornerstones uh, come out in three different models. It's our base model, which is the Pro, the middle tier, which is the Premium, and then our limited edition here, which is limited to only 500 games. Uh, and it's, this game's just packed right now. <laughs> so on the sides here, you can see these, these sort of like EQ lights going on on the cabinet. This is a new thing that we've uh, introduced called the expression lighting system. And this allows us to program uh, a cool light show to the music and to the gameplay to just help illuminate the game more and give like a more immersive feel to what you're doing when you're playing. And worth noting, like this, this isn't just like aesthetic and, and design. You actually have like a full like collection of Led Zeppelin classic music on the Absolutely. set into this pinball machine and the play of it, right? Yeah, there's 10 full length songs in here. And when you start the game, you get to choose the song that you're gonna rock out to. And the song is uninterrupted as you're playing all your balls, but there are other songs uh, sound effects, call outs that are happening while you're playing to make sure you're engaged with the action that's happening under the glass there. Um, you can change your song while you're playing. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty wild. And every song was chosen carefully between the band and Stern Pinball to make sure it was, uh, it made sense for pinball. High energy and just really fast to match this really fast playing game. And I do believe that it's been mentioned on the website, but can you give us a, can you speak to the rundown of songs that are on the, that are on the machine? Yeah, so uh, it, they're actually listed here in the back of the game. We've got Good Times, Bad Times, Communication Breakdown, Whole Lot of Love, Immigrant Song, Cashmere, Black Dog, Ramble On, Rock and Roll, Trampled Underfoot, and the song remains the same. Now, uh, to quote, you know, Garth from uh, Wayne's World, you know, No Stairway. No stairway, denied. You know, bogus. Uh, stairway to Heaven didn't make it into this because it, um, we all agreed like the vibe wasn't there for like a Fast and Furious pinball machine, you know? Um, if you really want the energy, like it doesn't just, it doesn't start off that like hyped up and we just wanted everything to just be as concert feeling high energy as possible when you're playing this game. For sure, nobody's gonna break out a lighter while they're playing. <laughs> do you do you have like a pop up that says no stairway denied? No stairway. <laughs> um, you know what? I actually might have to integrate that into my broadcasts when I play this game. <laughs> no stairway denied. So this is also uh, this is also going along with uh, Stern's video pinball, where you got the full color screen on the back of it. You and uh, can you speak a little bit to like the what plays in the background while you're playing the game. Absolutely. So this is a full LCD screen here that is playing live concert footage of the band. I'll actually hit start so you can sort of see here. When you start, you get to cycle through the songs that are there. We'll just pick rock and roll. And then periodically, you'll see all the graphics that we've created for this in conjunction with the live concert footage that is happening currently in the back. 
let me use my hand to point at the screen right there. <laughs> uh, album covers. And again, the band had a lot of say on how this game looks, how this game sounds, how it shoots, how it feels. Um, it's been an awesome collaboration uh, with Led Zeppelin to make this game come to life. Gots to know, Led Zeppelin, uh, Led Zeppelin band players, are they are they big pinball players? Um, you know what? That is not known to me. <laughs> but if uh, knowing the band and like when, you know, band was created 1968, pinball was huge then, you can only assume, you know, it being the only game that was around at the time that they had to have been big pinheads. Absolutely. And um, like these days, like pinball has, the, the process of playing it has taken on like you don't just have the bonuses, you don't just have the the bumpers anymore. You have like objectives in the actual board to pursue. Can you, can you speak to a little bit? What, what's Led Zeppelin doing with that style? So what we're trying to do is uh, we're we're taking the band on tour. We're collecting all the band members. We're experiencing uh, new mechanisms that we've created to try to integrate into the world of Led Zeppelin, and this is all about just interacting with the IP while experiencing an awesome concert at the same time. Was there and, anything uh, in particular about the cabinet that was really hard to get approved or went through like multiple radiations? Like any funny stories about that stuff that you can talk about if you're allowed to talk about it? Um, I'm not sure I can make any of that <laughs> public, but um, I, I will say, you know, making sure we got our sculpts correct. Um, in the back here, you can see there's uh, a 3D sculpt of the Icarus uh, that jumps into the air when you hit the target in front of it. So making sure we get certain things like that right. And it's not just us assuming like, okay, a wing probably looks like this. We'll just throw that in there and we're good. And um, yeah, when, uh, when you look at the way that like, what would you say is, uh, that you've learned for that the team has learned from like the the more modern the more recent pinball machines that you sort of innovated on or integrated here in the led zeppelin machine um it, it's just the 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 speed of this game has been speaking a lot to people as they've been getting them in their houses obviously uh location play isn't so much a thing right now <laughs> um, but just understanding that there is something to a game that plays really fast and really furious and it doesn't have to overcomplicate things, but if you want that deep rule set, you can dig deeper into a game. So uh, if we just figured out how to appeal to the beginners and the hardcore players at the same time uh, while still giving you a fun experience no matter what your skill level is. And that is an interesting factor. Uh, how would you compare the difficulty of this machine compared to some of the older uh, Stern machines? Um, so Steve Ritchie, the gentleman that designed this game, is notorious for making games that are just ludicrous fast. And this is no exception. In fact, it might be one of his fastest machines. Um, the shots are very long. They return very quick. Um, yeah, I just... There's, there's an energy level on this game, especially when you have the music cranked all the way up that you don't always get from other games that you're playing. And um, you mentioned that a part of the whole objective of the game is, uh, is, is gathering all the, band, all the band members as you play through the music. So is there sort of like, just just like it does it expand on itself like as you continue to play the game like where you have uh you have like your normal bonuses at first but then you open up some really interesting thing and can you speak to some of those bonuses that if there are some sure there's uh there i mean the the game is i'm not gonna lie still new to myself uh because it just came out so i'm still experiencing and trying to find out all the little nuances of what's happening here um there's different parts of the game that will expand different parts of the playfield, like spelling Led Zepp will let uh, a section of the playfield come out. Um, but every every little part of the game also has its own little objective. So you are getting bonuses for, you know, shooting the right ramp enough or shooting up the center enough. Uh, there's little lights for combos. So if you're really good at hitting a shot and immediately matching that with another shot, that's a whole separate objective that you'd start working on. Um, there's a lot to do in this package uh but yeah just we just want to make sure you have something going on at all times 
Can I say how impressive it is for you to do this interview while also <laughs> <laughs> playing <laughs> Sushi? <laughs> Literally, literally been streaming pinball for six and a half years. My job is talking and reading chat while playing at the same time. It, uh, it's something that I developed over the years. <laughs> you mentioned a certain technology, like that's new to this particular machine. Um, can you go a little bit more into detail? I think you mentioned it's the lighting effect that has to go that goes along with the uh, music. Oh yeah. So uh, the expression lighting system that we created. This is a controllable. L RGB LEDs that are sunk into the cabinet. So they're not obstructing anything. They're actually like built into the wood here. And we can program these to interact with the music. They can interact with shots that you hit. Um, and it just helps to bring that sort of concert feel to life while also properly illuminating the game more. Um, if you play this game in a really dark bar, you're gonna be able to see this game just fine. Uh, versus like some of the older games from like the 80s and 90s where you're squinting and like your head's up against the glass hoping you can see what's going on there. Uh, there's no shortage of light coming from this and we wanted to make sure that it was also as interactive and uh, just stuff moving on the play field is what's exciting uh, outside of just the ball rolling around. So just want to make sure you're having fun and like it's a full immersive experience here. Jack, how did you get into like pinball for some? Because you look, you look relatively young. Because the only pinball machines I remember oh. in the arcades were like the T2 machine. That's the only oh. pinball arcade machine I remember seeing yeah. in, in arcades. Terminator 2 is a, a an amazing game. So, I was an animator for many many years, uh, and I finally opened my own animation studio. And one of my guys bought a Lord of the Rings pinball machine, and he's like, "I don't have anywhere to put this." And I was like, "I guess you can leave it in the studio." <laughs> And I'm looking at this thing, I'm like, this is a giant, what the heck are you doing with this thing? And uh, then he called me a week later, he's like, hey, I bought another pinball machine. And I'm like, if you don't have room for these, my guy, you, like, you gotta figure something else out. And um, so one night I just like turned one on, I'm like, let's see what this thing's all about. And it just like, it, ch it changed everything for me. And this was only like eight years ago. <laughs> um, and so, you know, Shut down the animation company, been playing pinball full time. I was trained by the best pinball players in the world to uh, sort of catch up to where, you know, everyone is that's been playing their whole life. Then I started streaming on Twitch just to like record myself playing poorly so I can go back and see, you know, what I was doing wrong. This was like six years ago. Uh, I'm now like a Twitch partner and an ambassador for the platform, uh, just all just from this. And now whenever Stern comes out with a game, they send it here for me to keep on permanent loan and uh i got content for days i smell uh i smell like a like a movie like a film script going on with this <laughs> this sounds really interesting i want to see this netflix series really bad yeah. yeah let's go the pinball wizard by the way pinball <laughs> wizard any news outlet that you talk to if if this video starts with the tommy's who pinball wizard song playing you're gonna break my heart it's a great <laughs> song but it's every news article loves playing that song. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got it. Like, this is incredible too. Like we mentioned it earlier in this interview, like Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin's IP is notoriously hard to get. You guys have knocked it out of the park when it comes to the art on this game, when it comes to the play style of this game, it looks fantastic. It looks really enjoyable. Where, where does Stern go from here? Like, <laughs> what, that's a great question. Um, well, what's cool about Stern Pinball is we have multiple designers that have different ways of thinking about how a game should look and how it should play. And, um, you know, we, as you can see in the lineup behind us, we love doing uh, movies, comic book stuff, TV shows, uh, plays on like universes. So, Jurassic Park wasn't really about the movie. It was more about like the universe of Jurassic Park. Uh, we got this a great game and we have more great games coming. So uh, just stay tuned. But Led Zeppelin, it's available right now. Go freaking buy it. Dang it. Do you, do you have multiple uh, editions of this? Because I know sometimes you make like a luxury cabinet, then you make like a more smaller, affordable cabinet with less lights and stuff like that. Yeah, totally. So uh, every cornerstone that we come out with, which is one of our four main titles we come out with a year, Led Zeppelin being one of those, uh, has three models that come out. It's the the pro model is our base model. And that's the one that you'll see on a lot of locations. And that one's there for the public to like 
beat up and play and it's you know it's going to be great then we have the premium which is our mid-tier model and the limited edition which is the one that we have in front of us here uh this uh, we limit this le to 500 models so if you're one of the lucky 500 congratulations um but the price points on those the the pro is uh 61.99 the premium is 77.99 and the le is 91.99 presumably someday i mean fingers crossed right uh we will get back to like this pandemic will be a thing of the past hopefully and hopefully. Uh, i miss people <laughs> right and hopefully when we get there we might start seeing more arcade like we might start seeing arcades get back in business and hopefully like pinball tournaments right oh yeah yeah which uh which version do you think would be best suited to like led zeppelin pinball tournament so uh in, in tournament play you typically want games that play really fast and uh the fastest version you're gonna get of a led zeppelin is probably the pro um the 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 premiums you will also see on location but the the folks that buy the le's they like to keep those they like to keep them safe there's some there's some folks out there that'll throw them on location to let them get uh, smacked around, but you're probably going to see the pros out out in the wild once uh, we can get back out there. And um, out of those three, well, obviously we've seen there's a lot of features on the on the premium and the uh, the other limited edition. I gotta ask, like, when they're doing the molding on these, do you ever just wish that you could keep some of the props from some of these pinball machines as like a knickknack on your check, shelf? Hold on, like, check this out. Hold on. <laughs> because I get to go into engineering, I might take a few things. Um, this is the Zeppelin from the game. Um, yeah, the <laughs> it'd be cool if they like snuck some into like the coin box if you bought one. But um, yeah, they come out with some really cool stuff. Like Stranger Things has the Demi Gorgon head mm -hmm. that's behind this wall. Uh, that thing is proudly mounted above my desk um, for me to throw little wads of paper through his mouth when I'm really frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually the thing, the exact thing I was going to bring up is that y'all <laughs> built and built and molded an actual Hindenburg for this pinball yep. machine. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, Jack, you ball right of, through it too. In the case of this pinball machine particularly, um, did you approach the estate of Led Zeppelin or did he approach you? Like, how did this thing get started off the ground as a concept? So that is a wonderful question that the uh, director of licensing could probably answer. Um, those those type of things, I don't know how public that interaction is, um, but that is not something I could really speak to. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I actually don't know the answer. <laughs> no, fair enough. Um, but we, I, I will say, most of the IPs that come to us, uh, they come to us uh, instead of us going out to um, reach out to them. So there's a good chance this was a conversation that has been going on for quite some time. Especially this IP being so difficult to obtain. Mm -hmm. What makes a pinball machine like easy and what makes a pinball machine difficult? Obviously, like, can you elaborate on the design on what makes it like you can look at it, you can look at a pinball machine and be like, that's a hard machine or that's an easy yeah. machine. Like, how can you tell like visually? Um, it, how wide the shots are, uh, where the shots are located, how close things are to the flippers. Um, if a shot's too narrow, if something's way too close to the flippers, uh, you know, that might be a more difficult machine on a game like this. We have that ramp that's directly in the middle and pretty heckin' wide. You're gonna hit that shot all day long with your eyes closed. Like that, that's an easy gimme shot from both flippers, actually. Um, yeah, it just, uh, every game's different. And sometimes games surprise you too on how difficult they can be. And some games might shoot easy, but the code's difficult and vice versa. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a whole team collaboration and how they want to mix and match uh, every title that comes out. I do want to ask, what, uh, you mentioned that you've only had this particular machine for a short time, correct? Yeah. Um, have you have you seen it played by others? And if so, like, what's the highest score you've seen on this machine? Who has played it best so far? Ooh. Um, so these have only started to show up in people's houses. So uh, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of scores. That wasn't me trying to be a little punny either. Um, <clears throat> my grand champion on here is almost half a billion points. <laughs> Uh, then we got another 430, then another 234. And this is me just playing and goofing around while I'm like talking to chat and drinking energy drinks. 
Um, but I think if you're in like the the like one to two hundred million, you're probably doing pretty good on this game. Nice. And uh, well, that's about all I have. Do you have anything else, Greg? No, I just think it's uh, really cool. I think it's really cool that you got to pinball so after its time. It was like I was like either that or he's like sixty. He looks fantastic. <laughs> like that's a lot of I lotion, was, yeah. right? <laughs> The key is carrots every day. No kid, no joke. <laughs> and you don't eat them. You just rub them on your face yeah. and uh, you're good. <laughs> this is wild. Like this is, this is actual history being produced. Like pinball has such a long synchronized relationship with music. Like pinball was illegal on. forever. Like uh, uh, there was a time where it was illegal to play and own pinball machines. And, uh, the, the gentleman, he's not in the room right now, but uh, Zach, who was with me um, in the other breakout room, he's the uh, marketing manager at Stern. He's He was previously number one in the world, pinball player. Mm -hmm. And he's the guy that taught me how to play. And his dad, who's also a good friend of mine, is Roger Sharp, the gentleman that testified in court in the 70s to make pinball legal again here in the United States. It's wild. It is. Like, I remember those cases because they had to, like, actually prove that pinball wasn't gambling. And, they had to prove uh, it was a game of skill, and he rolled up and was just like, point at a shot, I'm going to hit it, and just <laughs> knocked it out of the park. Absolutely. And now we have tournaments, like, where people do that all day long. <laughs> Make a living playing pinball. Thank you, Roger. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, and speaking as, like, a person that plays all the time, I do want to ask, do you have any, like, tips that you would share for, like, the aspiring pro pinball player? Oh, when it absolutely. Comes to general machines or even this particular machine? If yeah. They spot uh, the oil? Any play tips I give carry over to every single game. Let me switch over here really quick. Uh, rule number one in pinball is um, whatever's flashing is what wants your most attention, right? So if I just hit start when I plunge, these two shots are where your points are going to be. And this is a green lock or a green arrow is usually a lock shot. Um, flipping as least as possible, least amount of flips as possible is the key to maintaining ball control. Because if a ball is rocketing towards this flipper here and your instinct is to flip that, right? Well, you don't know where the heck that ball is going to go. But if you let that ball bounce off of this flipper while it's down, it's going to lose a lot of momentum bounce over to this flipper where you can hold it up, trap it, you get to hold the ball, take a breath, see what's flashing, and then send the ball on its way. That procedure of letting the ball bounce and then trapping it, that's called a dead flip or a bounce pass. Um, you learn that and you are going to be leagues better than any other person uh, you know that is probably a beginner pinball player. Um, yeah, just use those two things and no, nothing's gonna stop you. Uh, nudging is not cheating, by the way. Little tiny taps on the game. Once you do a big move and it yells at you, that means you're being a little rough. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is a move called the post pass. If you need this ball that's trapped up on this flipper over here, you do a little tiny flick like that, and now the ball's over here. Wow. And vice versa, you can send it back this way and then send the ball on its way. That, that, that trick, blows my mind even though it was relatively simple I was like holy he just moved the ball from one battle to another my mind exploded it kind, of defi it kind of defies physics the way you're able to like move this ball around um but yeah that's called a post catch there's you know there's any number of ways of controlling this ball so uh just practice yeah I remember my dad telling me like oh to be good at pinball you have to aim and I looked at him like he was crazy I'm like aim I just want to hit the ball with the paddles <laughs> yeah right um <clears throat> Uh, Zach Sharp, the guy that taught me, I remember approaching him early on in my training, if you will. And I'm like, how are you so good at playing pinball? How are you hitting everything? And he says, I'm not great at hitting all my shots. I'm just really good at recovery. Meaning, let that ball bounce off the flippers and trap it up, take a breath, continue on your way. Fantastic. Um, well, Jack, I think that's just about everything. Um, Rock and roll. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Is there anything you want to share about the Led Zeppelin machine in closing? I know that uh, all three editions are, are available now. Yep. Yeah, just go to sternpinball.com. Uh, look up your distributor that's local to you. And uh, if you have an interest in a Stern Pinball machine, they will be more than happy to help you get one in your house. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. That has been Jack Danger with Stern Pinball. This is TJ Denzer with, uh, and, and Greg Burke with Shack News. Thank you all for watching so much, and thank you for doing it for Shack News, Jack. Thank you.